manhandle it. Too close to the edge. If you do an insert, you want it to be more centered. So this, this displacement. Is gonna, this is going to deplace about 30 pounds of concrete. Yep. Yep. Got it's it. For displacement. Got it. So we pack the pack the uh, the dowel through. Yep. The other side, and that's going to allow us to float that in the mold. And it stays centered. So. They centered in the mold. Nice. Yeah. Stone bomb. Stone bomb. Yeah, it looks like a piece of dynamite or something. There it is. Now we're putting the mold together. Putting it together. And this is the trial and error part where we find out if we have to shorten some of these dowels, which looks like we will. See this. Okay. Got it. Tape keeps it all secure, keeps the mold all in place. Yeah, helps hold it together. I'm leveling the hole. The cut's not perfect, but I'm trying to level it because the ground here is uneven. Once this gets weight in it and you start filling with concrete, you can't move it. It'll pull the mold apart. So we have to level it before we start. We set it in the tire to keep it uh, nice and what? snug. The, the, the tire suspends with the weight. Oh, there we go. And that's what keeps the roundness of the shape. You can't pour a stone on a flat ground. It'll push your mold on the bottom. A lot of times the weight will be too much. The mold will pop open. All your concrete will get lost. And we use the high strength concrete mix, just regular quickcrete. Yep. I've done pretty good in the past with those on stones. We should have siliconed it before, but I'm doing it now. And the silicone prevents the stickage. Yeah, it prevents the mold clean. Yeah. Makes the concrete come out smooth. It's okay if it pulls in the bottom. It's important to keep your uh, your mold clean too. That way, when you go to do your next stone, it's a two-man job here. I'm Now the tricky part when you fill it is to try and to get it to move around. Sometimes you have to reach in the hole, kind of push it around different ways in there, around your insert. Now I'm running around with my hand, poking with my fingers like this, to try and fill up any empty cavities. That way there's not huge cavities to fill in with air holes. Now we got it filled up to the top. We're gonna let that settle, but we're gonna use a, uh, a sander to vibrate it and get all the bubbles off. If I can get it rolling again, yes. A little bit more. We're gonna lose some water here. And that's all coming out of the concrete as it cures. Back to you. So far, so good. Yeah, so, so far, it's been like a half an hour process. Yeah. It takes it takes a little time and patience to do, right? Yeah, it does. 
you know, you vibrate, you get to try to do that and get all the voids out. That way you don't end up with big holes in your stone after. Yep. And then, uh, now we just let it sit a little bit. The water is going to separate itself and come to the top like it is. Yep. See how it's kind of its own little pool up there. Yeah. And, uh, all right, so talk to me. So now it's, now it's solidifying a little bit. Yep. Yeah, now we're just going to add a little bit, that way we don't have a flat spot. Yeah. So, so we're going to add some and try to round out the cap here. But see, see how the water's drying out of it? Yep. So it's curing fast. Alright, so it's probably been drying a good hour, or hour, an hour or two. We smoothed off the top with some concrete. We're just going to let it finish drying a little bit more before we open the sucker up. Come, it's very important to come back when it's setting up and try to get the roundest top you can. Otherwise, on the top of the hole there, you round it as best you can. And you want to make sure that you're right at the level with the mold. Otherwise, you're going to have what I like to call a crown, which it, it'll stick up from there. And if you do have a crown, you can take a uh, concrete sander, which is a basically a block on a handle and some water, and go back and forth over the top and it'll level out the crown. Now we gotta pop the mold. Which typically you'd want to tip it on its side, but we're trying to get this stone a little done a little bit quicker. So and the good part about this is if you can get the top to come off while it's still drying, it'll dry faster because now the air is getting to it too. We're beyond the point where it's taking the shape. And that's a good thing. So we're going to work, work, work our way around the edges, mm -hmm. loosening it up a little bit at a time. Loosening up the mold to see what we have can still fix. Ooh, we have a pretty nice stone. That's pretty dang nice. And now we can just smooth out some of this roughness. Now's a good time you can even take your piece of wood. See, so, so you just run your hand around it. And since it's still a little bit moist, this roughness layer I'm making is gonna make it easier to lift. And we get a little bit of a crown here. I'm gonna see if I can trim the crown carefully. Just gently. bigger rocks that are going to fall out. But now that it's slightly soft, it's good to work it until it gets completely hardened by uh, the air. Exactly. And little divots here and there are fine. But it's good to get this crown off. Then we take a little bit of uh, a mortar, a little bit of mix, and smooth it over the top. Make a nice clean surface. You just let the rocks drop off.
in here. So I'm going to roll it up a little bit. You pull the mold off slowly. There you go. Nice. Looks like a planet. Feel that. Feel the heat from a Kieran. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's smooth, though. It is. Man, that is cool. Now we just mix up a little bit and go over it the same way and it'll fill all these little little holes. That's beautiful. Say that's about a 200? Right around a 200 pound stone, yeah. That's freaking awesome, man. I just need a little bit of concrete and we'll, we'll finish her off. Just let the rocks fall off. Fill in any little divots and holes. All right, she's looking good, so we're just gonna let it sit, dry, dry overnight. We're gonna uh, paint her up. <laughs> 